What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Haterade Cowboy here. So today, I wanted to give you a tour of my home theater. Now, disclaimer, it's still a work in progress. So you're going to see things like areas that need to be painted. You're going to see areas that need to be finished with tape and float and, and sanded. I just installed some laminate flooring a few weeks ago. So I haven't finished some of the other rooms and you'll see there's a there's a guest bedroom in the back of the hallway and there's a little blanket that's coming out and that's because I have a cat and she'll tear the carpet up so but I I wanted to give you a tour of my theater and basically encourage everyone because you can still have a very functioning theater even though you may not be finished with it or you're making improvements or you're doing different things to it such as myself. Now it's it's about 95% done. There's some other things that I wanna do to it, but I just wanted to give you a small preview or tour of my theater. And as I progress and as I make different updates to it, then I will let you know as well. So I hope you enjoy it. It's not, you know, it's not gonna be film worthy quality. I'm, I'm recording this on my phone until I get some better gear, but I hope you enjoy the theater and I hope you maybe get some ideas for yourself as well. All right, everybody. I'm gonna give you a tour of my home theater. This is outside of my theater. And first, one of the first things you'll see is I have a TV running movie poster. And I have my own little marquee sign, I guess you could say. Welcome to Hater Ray Cowboy Cinema. That's the name of my my theater. And I've got some some signs. Thought it would make it feel more like a theater. Got the restroom sign. Got that off of Amazon. Pretty cheap, I think it was like 10 bucks. And then here's an Iron Man comic book kind of poster. It's like a hard poster thing. Then here's the restroom. Got that also off of Amazon for same, about the same price. And then another comic book poster, Incredible Hulk. And here's my cat that has to be the center of attention, Lion, of course. So as you can see, my theater is not completely done, at least on the, on the outside. So over here, there used to be a door and there was actually, so this, there was a door here that led to a spare bedroom. And I'll show you once I get inside. But there was a bedroom that was adjacent basically to my media room. And they were kind of small. I think it was like 10 by 10. And the media room, I think maybe was a little bit bigger. But as you can see here, So there used to not be a door here. Back up a little bit. There used to not be a door here. It was wide open. And so what we did was we, we blew out the wall that was in between the rooms, that separated the rooms. And then we closed off that doorway. I put some insulation in there. And then we put a door here because I wanted it to be enclosed. I didn't want it to be open. So put a door here. This is a solid core door. I painted it black. And as you can see, I'm not quite done yet. And the reason why I haven't finished taping and floating and putting on the, well, now I can't think of anything. <laughs> but the reason why it's not finished yet is because I eventually want to put some, pa some panels or some columns kind of make it look a little bit nicer. So I'd rather just wait and do it all at the same time. It's not that big a deal to me, as long as my theater is functioning. And then here I have my Mandalorian poster. I'm probably gonna get some more posters to fill up the wall. But back to this, this is called, there's a, this is a program called Movie Poster that somebody created. And basically what it does is you can connect it to Plex. I have a Plex server, or if you have MB or 
Cody XBMC, you can connect it to it. And what it does is it'll cycle through different movie posters from the web where you can load your own. And it's basically like you're at the theater. And then when you start actually playing something, it'll recognize that your Plex server is playing something and it'll display whatever you're watching on that screen. And I will show you that here in a second. All right, so I'm about to play something from my server and you'll see it change here in a second. And there you go. So this is really cool. It has the start time, end time, now playing. It has that album art. And then it has at the bottom, it shows you Dolby Digital 2.0, you know, TVPG, aspect ratio. So it's really cool. And it kind of gives it, well, it does for me, it gives it more of a, of a theater feeling. And when people come over, they can see what's playing. And then when I pause, if I pause it, it'll just start cycling back to different movie posters. And then if I hit play again, So this is a really cool program. My cousin, who's who's a programmer, he's actually, we actually started talking and he was like, man, you know what? I think I can create my own program with even better features. Cause I like it, but we were like, you know, I wish there was more features for different things that we've, that we've talked about. So he's actually making a program that's similar, but we're going to, I'll, I'll do a video a different separate video on that once he finishes it and I'll interview him and we're gonna talk about that it's gonna be really really cool he's integrating some really cool features with it and some other services so that will be cool and next I will take you into the theater hey Siri cowboy all right so I have HomeKit, Siri. So I use Siri to turn on all my equipment. I have my HomeKit linked to my Harmony hub, my Harmony account. So I can do a lot of really cool stuff. Turns on my projector. And for some reason, it did not turn on my Harmony. So I have the Harmony Elite remote. Turn on my shield. But this is my theater. So as you'll see in here, it's still a lot of work that I need to do that I haven't finished yet. Main, most important thing is that it's functional. So I'm gonna turn on some more lights in here so you can get a better picture of everything. All right, so I've got some more lights on. so. I'll start with the front of the room. I have a 100 inch silver ticket screen. It's not acoustically transparent or anything. As you can see, I have my speakers on the floor. Ideally, I would like to do that, but there's a lot of challenges for me. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to do it. So right now, probably for the long haul, I'll just have my speakers on the floor. And again, as you can see, I'm still doing some work, so it's a work in progress. Now, like I was saying before, you can see there's a door behind here. It looks really janky, but there used to be, if you see this paneling that's right here, my dad put that up to hide the wires, but there used to be a wall here. So we blew out the wall and we opened it up to make it a bigger room. But here I have my speakers. So for my left and right, I have Polk RTI-8, really old speakers. 
but they've served me well. I think I've had them for about almost 10 years. I got them from Fry's. They weren't being manufactured anymore, so it was like a clear out. I think I got both of those for like $120, $130 a piece. So they were really cheap, but they're, they're still quality good speakers. And my center channel, I literally just upgraded this last week. This is a Polk LSIM 706C. And I don't want to get into like prices and stuff because that's not what this channel is about. Everybody's got a different budget, but I did want to say that they aren't manufacturing these anymore. But you can still find some of them. I got it off of Amazon. Let me take the the grill off. I got it off of Amazon. This is like a $1500 speaker. It was 399, so that I could not pass up. So before I was running a CSI A6. Still, it was a good speaker, but obviously this is better, better quality. This got the ring radiator tweeter. So I was trying to find the matching line, the LSIM speakers, the towers, but they're really, really hard to find. I don't, I can't find them anywhere. So eventually maybe I would like to upgrade them to maybe like the 706, or I'm sorry, the, the R700s, the reserve line. It still won't be probably timber matched, but one thing about them is they also have a ring radiator tweeter. So it's a newer technology, better products, or probably better products that they use since it's an updated line, but you know, at least it'll still match the ring radiator tweeter. So that's cool. For my side surrounds, I have some Polk in wall speakers. I don't remember the actual model. I can look it up, but I got them off of Amazon. And then as you can see, I have a, a lot of panels. So this big one right here, I actually made that myself. I bought the materials, had my dad cut the wood for me. I didn't have some of the tools at the time, but he cut the wood for me. And then I got some Roxel Safe and Sound and I got some fabric and I wrapped it myself and hung it in them. I really like it. The other panels, that's a that's a bass trap, and that's just an acoustic panel, acoustic panel, some diffusers, cheap diffusers that I got off of Amazon. I just installed those. I don't know how they're gonna work, but we'll see. But I got the acoustic panels off of acoustamac.com. So I've really been happy with those. I just got those curtains. I got the curtains off of Home Depot. And the curtain rod I got off of Amazon, just to, you know cheap curtain rod that curves around to kind of block out the light. They're blackout blinds. So happy with those. I've got some Astros bobblehead. I'm in Houston, Texas. So I'm a big, big baseball fan, big Astros fan. Love the Astros. Really sad that I can't go to the, to the games anymore because of COVID. I just don't feel comfortable, but some more bobbleheads. Superman, my favorite superhero. All right, so let's talk about this riser. So I built this riser myself. This was my very first DIY, pretty much project of anything. I've never, I've never built anything out of wood before. I watched some videos on YouTube that helped a lot. My dad is basically a carpenter. He has worked in the wood industry for many, many years, door industry. And he's not technically like a professional carpenter. He doesn't get paid for it, but he knows how to build all kinds of stuff. He's been making things out of wood for many, many years. So I guess that kind of helped me, but I just watched some videos on YouTube and put it together myself. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. There were some mistakes that I made that I was able to correct during. And then there was others that I didn't really get to correct, but I put some, some strip lighting under here. And as you can see, obviously I didn't, I still need to do some more carpeting. 
And this is just some peel and stick carpet, some cheap peel and stick carpet that wasn't very good. But you can kind of see the lights. So that's, that's the riser. Really happy with it. Really, really makes it feel more like a theater. So I have stadium seating. So right now I have six seats. And I believe these are the Valencia Syracuse seats. I've had them for probably about a month now. Really happy with them. I still need to get a third one, but right now that was all I could afford. But I'm happy with them and they're, they're really nice. This couch here is temporary and it's not, it's not very ideal because it's really close to the screen. I think it's exactly like six feet to the screen, so it's really close. And it, eventually what I want to do is there's a, there's a closet here and there's about two feet behind the closet. I want to blow out that wall and basically push everything back, the screen, the speakers, and that'll be about eight feet from the, from the front row. And that'll be a lot so better. So for my rear surrounds, I've got some clips and I don't remember the model. I bought these, I think earlier this year. I kind of wanted to try something else. I had some cheap poke monitor speakers that I've had probably for about 10 years, about the same amount of time that I've had the other speakers, but I I wanted to kind of try something new and I'm happy with them. They, they're they pretty good. Obviously, you know, they're not top of the line clips, but they're better than my, than my monitors that I was running. So here's some more action figures, some more bobbleheads. So those are my rear surrounds and then back surrounds. And then for my end ceiling, I have four end ceiling speakers. There's one right there. I still need to finish painting that. I messed up and I didn't paint it before I installed it. So I was able to take the grill out and paint it, but I still need to paint the rest of it. So I have four of those. Polk in ceiling speakers. So I'm running a 7.2.4. So here's my, I have two subwoofers. This is a H a SHU, I always say HSU, but it's a SHU VTF3 MK4. They don't even manufacture this anymore. It's a 12 inch subwoofer, but it's been solid. I had that for, for many years, and then I recently got this SVS subwoofer, it's a 12 inch. I don't remember the model number, but I I wanted to, this is the first time that I've had two subwoofers. So ideally, you know, you wanna have the both of the subwoofers the same, same size, but kinda of wanted to try something else. I wanted to try SVS, I had never heard, I had never tried SVS. And I know they they make some really good stuff, so I wanted to try it, and I'm really happy with it. So, two subs is the way to go, at least. If you can do more, then do more. There's some. Uh, <laughs> this is temporary, but there's a bunch of candy and stuff here. I had a couple friends over this weekend. We're all we're all vaccinated, so don't worry. But we had a little movie viewing. We're trying to do like maybe like once a month. I haven't been to the theater since COVID, so almost two years, and I don't plan on going anytime soon. But I will show you my rack, which is kind of a not too bad of a rat's nest. It's better than it was before, but I still need to get some panels for this. All right, so here's the equipment that's in my rack. Obviously, I don't I don't have a lot of like high end equipment. It's taken me years to get a, a lot of this stuff. There's way, way, way more expensive stuff out there. But what I have, it suits me and I like it. You know, everybody has a budget. So, you know, I do have some some nice things that I've saved up for, but you gotta start somewhere. So don't get discouraged. It takes years to, to get some of the equipment that you want. There's things that I want that I will probably never have. But anyways, I have a Emotiva here at the bottom. This is a XBA3 Gen 2, 200 watt per channel. And this is running my LCR. And then I have the Anthem MRX 720. Absolutely love this thing. I've had three different Onkyo receivers. 
and I have a Pioneer receiver and this blows them all out of the water. The sound quality is just way, way better. And the Anthem Arc is, it's awesome. And then here, I know, sorry, it's kind of dark. I need to get a light from my rack, but this is a UPA 700 Emotiva, seven channel, 80 watts per channel RMS. The XPA 3 is also RMS, but they don't make this anymore, but it's still pretty solid. So I'm running my surrounds and my in-ceiling speakers off of that. I'm only using seven channels. I'm sorry, I'm only using six channels. Here, I have an Oppo UDP-203. Love this thing. Really sad that they're not making it anymore. And again, sorry, it's it's really dark. I apologize, but I got this rack from a guy on OfferUp. It's a 44U rack. I had a 15U rack before and it was not enough. And I didn't really care about it being new. I didn't really want to spend more money. I got this for, I think, for like 200 bucks, so it was really cheap. But I need to get panels for it, and I need to get some lighting. But Oppo, really great. I love it. Really sad that they're not making them anymore. I don't think I'm ever going to get rid of it. I thought about selling it because they're the price that they're selling for online is ridiculous, even used. But I don't think I'm ever going to get rid of it. I have a PS4. I have a Xbox series x i was thankful to get one at launch on pre-order and then i have a emotiva base x a100 that's running my rear surrounds i have a apple tv you can't see it because it's dark but there's my harmony hub and then there is my nvidia shield love that thing that's what i use for my plex server to stream on my from my computer. All right, here, so here's the equipment in my rack, and I apologize, it's really dark. I got this rack off of Offer, Offer Up. It was a guy selling it, it's, 40, it's a 44U rack. Originally, I had a 15U rack, which I still have, and I'm trying to sell. And I misjudged, and my equipment did not fit in that, so I didn't really want to spend, you know, $1,000 for another rack. So he was selling this, and I got it for, I think it was like 200 bucks but I still need to get the panels for it, so. But here I have an XPA, Emotiva XPA3. It's a three channel, 200 watt per channel RMS that's running my LCR. I have the Anthem MRX720, love this thing. It's amazing. It is way better than anything else that I've had before. I've had three Akio receivers and I currently have a Pioneer Elite SC95 in the living room. This Anthem blows all of them out of the water. Arc Genesis is, is it's leaps and, and bounds beyond the other room corrections. And then here I have an Emotiva UPA 700. It's a seven channel. I think it's 80 watts per channel RMS. So that's running my left and right surrounds and my four in ceiling speakers. So I'm only using six channels. And then I have an Oppo UDP, UDP 203. Love this thing. I don't think I'm ever gonna get rid of it. I considered selling it because the prices that they're selling for online is absolutely ridiculous because they don't make them anymore. And people are paying two or three times the price of the original price. So. I don't think I'm ever gonna get rid of it though. It's it's really good. I don't really use it that much anymore because I have a Plex server and I rip all my movies digitally or to digital. So I don't even really use it that much, but I, I still love it. I do use it. I have a PS4 and I have a Xbox Series X. I was thankful enough to, to get one at launch when they pre-ordered it, so really like that. And I have a Emotiva. Basics A100 two channel, and I think that is 50 watts per channel. That's running my my back surrounds, rear surrounds. And then here I have a you can't see it; it's really dark. Again, I apologize, but I have an Apple TV 4K, my Harmony Hub, 
And then I have an NVIDIA Shield. You can see the green light on it. I really love the NVIDIA Shield. It's a 2017 version, so it doesn't have Dolby Vision. But I will get to that in a minute because I am able to get Dolby Vision. And then here is a Panamax MR4000. And then you can't really see it too good here, but I have a switcher and it allows me to get Dolby Vision. It's the HD Diva. I can't remember the exact model number, but I'll, I'll look it up. So I have an HD Fury. This is a HD Fury Diva. And this is, it's a lot of things. It's a switcher and it allows me to get Dolby Vision on devices that don't have Dolby Vision via low latency Dolby Vision. So I'll make a separate video about that. Really cool. And then my projector is an Epson 5040 UB. Really, really enjoying this. This is actually my first projector and it's been really good. It, I was disappointed that, you know, not long after that they came out with the 5050 UB. And, but it served me well. I really enjoy it. The light's blinking because I need to change the bulb. I'm not gonna do it yet because I'm building a box, a hush box for this. And I wanna change, I, I need to change the bulb and I don't have the bulb yet, so I'm waiting. But it still has a really, really good picture. It's got about, I think, 3,500 hours on it. So I'm really happy with it. And eventually when I finish the room, when I do some other stuff, I'll make a proper, a proper, better tour of the theater room with better lighting. But for now, just wanted to give you guys a tour and just show you that, you know, it takes time. Don't get discouraged. You know, I don't have the nicest equipment. I'm never gonna have the nicest equipment, but I have some nice stuff and it's really enjoyable. It sounds really great. And as everybody, knows home theater you know <laughs> you're never done upgrading but it takes time everybody has a different budget and you just have to be patient so that's my home theater all right guys i hope you enjoyed my little tour of my theater and as i mentioned before it's not done as you saw there's lots of things that i need to fix there's things that may be unsightly or things that are not aesthetically pleasing. And that's because I'm still working on my theater. But I wanted to show you that you can have a very functioning theater still, even though you may be making changes or updates to your theater, maybe even cosmetic updates like, like I'm doing. There's still things that I wanna do in the future that I'm not able to do right now, but I'm still able to use my theater. I can still have a, a few friends over to enjoy movies and things like that and that's what's that's what's most important obviously i built this theater for myself because i'm an audio and a video file and i just I, I love home theater but i also enjoy having friends over to watch movies and it's it's fun we can sit around we can talk we can eat we get snacks and it's just an enjoyable more enjoyable experience than going to the theater especially right now with COVID. i'm, I'm not going to the theater anytime soon. So for all you guys out there that are maybe just getting started, don't get discouraged. It takes time. Everybody has a different budget and there's tons, there's tons of advice out on the internet. And I hope to be able to bring some of that information to you. What I know, I'm still learning. I don't know everything, but what I do know, I hope to share with you and I'll be posting more videos on different things and hopefully some reviews at some point too. So again, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.